this is uh, lecture what 22 okay <coughs> okay so the last thing we were saying <coughs> was the trellis diagram for isi awgn uh, for the isi awgn model once again let me remind you we are looking at a model where a symbol sequence sk is going through a an equivalent discrete time filter which is monic causal loosely minimum phase you obtain bk to which uh, noise gets added which i know is iid gaussian in both dimensions okay and then i get zk okay so i'm looking at building an optimal detector here which will produce an estimate of s hat okay so that's easy to write down actually so you see s hat is argument of the minimum over a in x l <coughs> summation k equals 0 to l plus mu minus 1 modulus z k minus b k square okay so so the extra terminations the input corresponding to that is all plus 1 the way i assumed it okay some chosen constellation point so this becomes well defined okay so the question as to why termination is needed i'll answer it as we go along uh, later okay so this is what we're trying to build and we immediately notice this is going to be incredibly complex for large x and large l okay? and we want to reduce it to a complexity which i said was suppose this is mu tap <coughs> i claimed we can do this with complexity what size x bar mu k okay, roughly of that order complexity we can do it so in particular at least it's <coughs> seems to be indep <coughs> independent of l but l will come as a linear factor somewhere here okay so don't think l is completely irrelevant but it's a linear factor so every time you increase l you just have to pay the same price okay so it's not too bad <coughs> okay so so that's the picture so for this a, uh, an, a structure which plays a crucial role in getting to this complexity is the trellis okay so this the sequence of symbols which are produced by m of z can be represented on the on a trellis Okay, so that's the that's the crucial idea. We, show, we saw <coughs> a few examples, <coughs> and hopefully, I also showed you an example of termination. Okay, how you have to shift in plus ones, then drive your state back to the known state at the end. Okay, so those two things are crucial. Okay, so any questions or comments? Is it okay? Everything is fine. Okay. <coughs> All right. So my my uh, my vector s in this situation is going to be s of 0 through s l minus 1 so i have l data symbols followed by plus ones which are mu in number that's for termination okay so this is for termination i'm saying plus 1 so you might have a situation where plus 1 is not in the constellation so then you have to replace it by anything so i'm assuming plus 1 is always in the constellation Imagine an M PAM or M squared QAM, in which, in which case, if you, if you think of QAM, then maybe plus one is not there. So, so, so this is mostly for BPSK. Okay, so. Okay, so imagine BPSK, if you're getting confused. Okay, so this is for termination. That's how I'm going to imagine this. Okay, so, <coughs> so let's draw. So, 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 what did I do? So the trellis was basically a state diagram with the time axis on each stage of the trellis you had previous state to next state transitions from previous state to next state caused by the current input sk along with it there was an output bk okay so that was uh, one stage of the trellis so in general if you have to draw one stage you would have previous states here you would have next states here so this I think I called uh, psi, psi k minus k, and then the next state would be psi k plus 1, okay. And then this is the kth stage and you have transitions, I guess you have transitions all over the place, I don't know how it will work out, right, there will be transitions all over the place and uh, along with this stage we will associate a lot of things, one of the things we will associate is zk, right, zk will associate with this stage of the trellis the reason is sk causes an output bk 
in that stage and BK noise gets added to BK to produce ZK. Okay, so all these things make a lot of sense. <coughs> okay, so another thing you observe from the objective function that we are trying to minimize, there is one more quantity that I can potentially associate with this stage of the trellis. What would that be? Okay, in the objective function, the stage contributes something to the objective function. What is that contribution? The way I wrote it down. Okay, so remember what is B here? Okay, so let me qualify this with B A. Okay, what what is B A now? B A K is what? A K convolved with M K. Okay, so don't go back go back to the previous B and think that's the one. So it's the B corresponding to the symbol A. Okay, so look at the objective function for a while and tell me what component of that objective function is controlled by the kth stage. It's easy to see that. Okay, the objective function is a sum of several terms. There will be one term which corresponds to stage k. What is that term? The kth term, right? So modulus zk minus bk squared. So nicely one can also associate the objective function as sum of several terms and each term is associated with one stage of the trellis. Okay, so all these things are uh, nice to see. Okay, so associated with this stage is this zk minus bk okay all right okay so that's the that's that's how to picture the kth stage okay so this is how you this is the picture that you should have in your mind whenever you think of uh, maximum likelihood sequence detector this is the picture that you should have in your mind okay so now this this uh, this function so to speak this part of the objective function okay has a difference of two things zk which is common for all branches of the stage. Okay, so every branch has ZK in common. Okay, what will differ depending on the branch? BK will differ. Okay, so depending on which branch you are in, you will get a different BK. So in fact, this term of the objective function, you can associate one such term with every branch. Okay, depending on the exact BK that you had on that branch, you would associate a different term. Okay, so in a way, this is a way of weighting your trellis. Okay, so I'm saying if this term is very very small for a branch, what does it mean? Yeah, it's probable that the the transition would have happened. Okay, so right? If it's very large, then it means then we are far away from that corresponding transition. So in a way, this is a nice weight to put on each branch. Okay, so it's it's given a name. It's called a branch metric. Okay, so I'll I'll come back to it as we go along. Okay, so so now, <coughs> so suppose you take one branch in the stage. Okay, so you have a state i, you go to state j on a branch. Okay, associated with that branch is a certain input. Okay, so let me not put s k here. I'll say I have an input and a certain output. Okay. So, so this is one branch in a stage. Okay, suppose this is the kth stage. Then what I observe corresponding to this stage is zk. Okay, and the term that I'm interested in in the objective function is modulus zk minus the output corresponding to that stage squared. Okay, so depending on which branch I am on, that output will change. Right. So if I if I was in some other branch, that output would have been different. Okay. So what I'm going to say is to this particular branch, I'll associate a certain weight which will be modulus zk minus output squared okay so it's all okay so now for different branches i'll associate a different weight now this weight is a real number okay there is no complex or anything okay so this is called the branch metric of branch metric of the branch okay so it's important enough so i'll give it a name okay so if you have so this I will denote as uh, BM subscript K I to J. Okay, what is that? Okay, so this fancy notation this is it's quite intuitive. At the kth stage, the branch metric for the branch from state I to state J. Okay, so the states, right? So remember, all these things are states. A bunch of states. I'm going to number the states from one to some ns okay so i can do that right 
okay what will ns be size x power mu okay i'm just numbering the states that way for convenience actually the states how did what did we think of the states all the previous mu inputs it's actually a vector but i'm going to just conveniently number it from 1 to ns and I, of course i can have a mapping from 1 to that if i want okay so it's not a problem so mod x power mu so this is for convenience we'll do that and then associated to each branch in each stage of the trellis i'm going to associate a weight or a metric which i call the branch metric i'm going to denote that bm subscript k from i to j if i to j is not possible for a certain branch i can say it's got infinite weight which means there's no way you that's going to occur won't occur with very high probability so you so you, you notice also the other intuition right if the branch metric is very small it means the actual zk was very close to that corresponding output so that branch could have actually been traversed at the encoder okay so you don't know what was happening right so that's that's the intuition behind why you define branch metric also the crucial thing is it plays it it contributes a term towards the the ultimate uh, objective function i have that i have to minimize okay so that's also a point all right so that's with one branch in stellis so now suppose i give you the zks all the zks one can go ahead and compute the branch metric for every branch in the trellis right this is a computation you can do right you know the output corresponding to each branch you know zk for each each stage you can compute so the weights can be computed for each branch okay so the branch metrics can be computed given zk okay so typically when you get the received values you would compute these branch metrics and load them onto the corresponding branches in the trellis so you keep that okay, so that's how you start okay so to proceed further i have to interpret this arg arg min a in excel and the objective function in terms of the trellis okay so my entire decoding is going to happen on the trellis right now i'm still interpreting my input symbols and outputs in terms of just entities that i defined before and i have not translated them into the trellis notation so i'll have to now slowly make that transition and the transition is very very easy to make okay the crucial observation there is paths in the trellis okay what do i mean by a path in the trellis yeah some possible set of transition okay so a set of branches in which you can go continuously from left to right it's a very intuitive simple definition i can write down a proper technical definition but i guess it's not too crucial when i say paths it's uh, it's very clear okay so basically a path will be uh, i can think of it as a sequence of states okay and it's possible to transition from one state to the next on a branch okay so it should be valid okay so paths in the trellis are defined like that now suppose i ask the question in a in a trellis like like i'm considering right now how many paths do we have how do you answer that question how many valid paths do you have on this trellis mu parallel mu parallel okay so it seems complicated right so first thing you have to do is you have to associate paths in the trellis with something else you know already and then you'll see this computation is very very trivial in fact every path in a trellis corresponds to what one a belonging to excel do you agree right do you agree or not suppose i give you a belonging to excel i can define a path on my trellis how will i do that a0 will be the input on the first stage so i know i took some branch and then a1 will be the input on the second stage right so i can do that and define a path corresponding to a vector a once i do this the answer is very trivial so how many paths are there in the trellis size x parallel okay so it becomes very easy but this association is very very crucial okay every possible input sequence into my encoder corresponds to a valid path on the trellis okay it makes total sense right you have to traverse the trellis you have to be on the state diagram you can't just generally jump from here to there okay so as long as you are on the trellis then it has to correspond to this all right so that's the crucial link once you make this link everything will become extremely easy okay so let me go go back to this so once i have a 
path corresponding to A. In fact, I can index each path in the trellis with A. You can say path of A. Okay, what does it mean? So when you input A to the trellis, what is the path it took? It took? Okay, so of course I have the termination things adding on, but that's fixed. That doesn't change anything. Right? That doesn't increase any possibility. Okay, so this is the path corresponding to A. Okay, so in fact I can go a little bit further and say the path corresponding to A would be psi 0, psi 1A, psi 2A, so on. Right? Till what? Psi mu plus L. Right? Right? I know that my input A would have corresponded to a sequence of states. I can put them together and say that's my path. Okay, and I can even index that with A. Okay. So when I ask for my decoding, I can either output a vector s hat or the path corresponding to vector s hat. Okay, so I'm slowly moving from the definition of the decoder towards the trellis. I'm translating all the corresponding terms to the trellis. Okay, right? Is that clear? So why did I not put a for psi zero and psi mu plus l? Yeah, it's actually independent of a. That's so we are fixing the uh, encoder, right? So I can as well write psi zero and psi mu plus l. In fact, psi one of a, I don't have to write the entire vector, right? What will it actually depend on? Only a zero, okay? But just for convenience, I'm going to put a. I can't keep writing something uh, so carefully. All right? So, so that's the that's the thing for the path. Okay. So the next step, if you go back and look at the decoder definition once again, one thing we have is vector a belonging to XL, and that we have converted into a trellis quantity. The thing to convert into a trellis quantity next is this objective function. Okay, so how are we going to convert that? I'll use the branch metric for that and it's very, it's quite straightforward. Okay, so you see the path while it is being seen as a sequence of states can also be seen as what? Sequence of branches, right? It's also a sequence of branches. Do you agree? Okay, it's a very easy thing to see. I mean, if you went on a sequence of states, then there would have been a branch between any two states, and you put those sequence of branches together, you get uh, okay. And each branch would have a branch metric. So what do you do for the uh, for the objective function? You add up all the branch metrics, you get a metric for the entire path, and that I'm going to call as the path metric. Okay. So if you want to be specific, how many branches will you have in a path? L plus mu, right? L plus mu. So, but the sequence of states will be L plus mu plus one because you have the starting and the ending. Okay. So there'll be something uh, like that. So, so one needs to be careful there. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Okay. So based on this decomposition of the path, I can write path metric, okay, to be sum over branch in path branch metric. Okay. So I know it's not a very nice uh, mathematical writing with alphas and betas, but I guess this is clear enough. So you see what it is. So you take every branch in the path, take its branch metric, add up all the branch metrics, you get a path metric. Okay. So I'm going to claim, so I should say, should be careful here. Okay, I should put A. Okay. So it's okay. It's just an index with A. It's okay. So I'll, sometimes I simply say path metric when the path is clear. Okay. So I don't have to worry about it. Okay. So now I have everything I need. In fact, this is going to be what? The objective function corresponding to what a so in fact this is going to be summation k equals 0 to l plus what mu minus 1 modulus z k minus b a k square right so i have already translated my objective function into minimizing path metric Okay, so it's once again the intuition about path metric also should be clear to you. If, if your path has a very large path metric, what does it mean? It probably didn't really happen. Okay, the path has very low path metric. That path could have been traversed at the encoder. Okay, so you don't know which path was traversed at the encoder. At the decoder, you have only noisy versions of the outputs. From that, you have to estimate the best path. And how are you going to do it? You're going to do it like this. Okay, as hat is going to be, okay, argument. Okay, so I'm going to say path of S hat, sorry, argument of minimum over path and trellis for what? The path metric. 
so now we have a completely trellis description of the decode of the mlst okay the maximum likelihood sequence detector can be given a very simple and nice uh, trellis interpretation so you go over all all the paths in the trellis and find that path which has the least path metric okay it's the exact same thing i've not changed anything it's just a way of looking at it which simplifies things all right any questions is that fine okay so so that's with the path metric and the so i'm going to postpone an example till until later okay so i want to do the definition of the algorithm formally and then i'll do an example later so hold on for a while if you see that all this notation is confusing you be uh, patient with me so eventually we'll get there okay so 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 okay all right so now comes the crucial part okay so previously when we were viewing the the so how many paths did we have here we had size x power l okay so it's not clear why this will greatly simplify the problem at all right how many possible paths you have to consider the same number so so what's the big deal why why is there a simplification okay so that's the question that you have to ask the simplification comes because you can once you think of it as in path you can view the optimization slightly differently and suddenly you get a massive simplification okay so the way to view it is to say the set of so so you take a path okay so suppose you take a path okay so how, how will a path look i have my size 0 and i have my psi l plus mu okay and then the question okay. okay so suppose you look at the let me say i think i've put the k minus 1 stage i mean it doesn't really matter some stage 1 2 okay ns 1 2 ns okay so this is suppose this psi k minus 1 and this is psi k and you have uh, zk minus 1 here you know so this is a trellis okay so if you think of a path on this trellis it's going to start here and what is it going to do it's going to do something okay right so all kinds of paths will be there and then it will go this way it'll go this way it'll go this way all kinds of paths will be there okay so i don't have to worry so there's really no discrimination possible okay so the way to discriminate it's a crucial idea okay it's, it's very powerful in several places is to focus on a particular stage and only look at those paths that pass through a particular state at that particular stage okay so i'm going to say at the k minus 1 after the k minus 1 stage okay so for psi k i'm going to focus here and say i, I want to look at all paths that go through state i at after the k minus 1 stage okay so i want to look at all paths such that what psi k equals i okay so instead of just that's how i'm going to discriminate between the paths to quickly do my minimization okay so i need some discrimination between the paths and the way i'm going to discriminate it is i'm going to so focus on psi k which is the kth state that the path goes through i'm going to say i'm going to look at all those paths in this trellis whose whose state after the k minus 1 stage is i okay so now once i do that you'll see the picture will change how will this how will all these paths look now suppose i say i don't i don't care about this path right i don't care about this path because it doesn't really go through i i only care about those paths which go through i at the k stage so how is that going to look I mean, well maybe this is all okay but okay so the picture you see will change okay so you'll have something like this going from here and then everything else you have will meet at i do you see that okay maybe something like this do you see that so all this set okay right of course there are other paths in the trellis but only those paths i'm looking at which go through the state i after the k minus 1 stage then i have this kind of a picture okay so now suppose i say i want to find the minimum metric path among, among only these paths first okay so see if i have a whole set of paths i can split them into different partitions find the minimum in each partition first and then find the overall minimum it's the same i can do that any number of ways so i'm going to say instead of finding the overall minimum i'll first look at the smaller set of paths which kind of get pinched at 
the ith state after the k minus 1 uh, stage okay so so something like this and i want to now ask the question is finding the minimum metric path among these paths any simpler okay okay so the reason is now you can split between the part before psi k and the part after psi k okay once you know that you went through the ith stage you can look at the paths the partial path up to psi k and minimize there and then look at the path from psi k to psi mu l plus mu minimize there and put both together you will get the minimum okay right because i know i went through i here i can split it into two i'll say i do the minimum for the first part and then do the minimum for the second part and put it together i should get the overall minimum okay so and that's that's crucial there are several things that are crucial here one crucial thing obviously you'll agree is i'm focusing only on parts that are going through i stage at the k minus 1 stage another crucial thing is termination if i did not do termination i wouldn't know that my final state is psi l plus mu then i still this this will not appear this will not apply okay this applies because i know i started at the common state i am at a common state somewhere in the middle and then i will also end at a at the same state only since all these three are true this minim splitting of the minimization applies okay so that's the crucial part of termination there if you did not terminate if you don't know which state you will end up in after that you can't still apply this okay you never know there might be something else which suddenly makes the minimum okay so you don't think about it it's a little bit <laughs> see it might seem simple when i state it this way but it needs some proving and it needs to be carefully understood okay so think about it more i'll i'll try to write down a few expressions to give you some idea but without that it's tough to do okay so the way you prove this result the result that i stated which seems very intuitive and nice to you how you prove it is you say suppose i look at path star which is argument of minimum over path in okay so maybe i'll call this set pi pki okay path in pki path metric okay suppose i look at path star okay so i'm claiming if you restrict path star to okay so i'm running out of space here if you restrict path star to what from 0 to k minus 1 If you restrict path star to zero to k minus one, this is going to be what? Argument of minimization path in this entire set restricted from zero to k minus one path metric. Okay. In fact, even the other result is true. Path star restricted from k to l plus mu will be the argument of the minimum over paths in pki restricted from k to l plus mu of the path metric both of those will have to be true the reason is suppose this is not true okay suppose this is not true suppose there is some other path here which is actually giving you a partial minimum what can you do then you take this path put it along with the path star restricted from k to l plus mu then you will get a overall minimum which contradicts path star okay and you can do the same for reverse but if you did not have yourself ending at the same state you can't do that okay so think about it very carefully that contradiction will not happen okay so you can prove this by contradiction assume the opposite and then prove it well it can end anywhere see at the at psi l if you look at psi l right psi l can be anything it can be from 1 to ns at psi l plus mu i know is fixed to be 1 or whatever number you choose okay so it can be anything so my path will start at psi 0 but will end at anywhere so here i don't consider those things after that it has to go back to psi l plus mu and the outputs i got for the termination are crucial because that will give me my branch matrix there and all that you use okay Of course, there are versions of Viterbi which you modify even when you don't have termination and give you approximate results which are very good. But if you don't terminate, it's not optimal. Which is not okay. So I'm not going to go through every step of this proof, but I hope it's intuitive and clear to you, right? It's not, it's not, uh, it's not all that uh, difficult to see. So because you're going through a particular state and because you're starting at the same state and ending at the same state, 
it has to happen that you can do a partial minimization over this thing and it has to work out okay both ways because if it doesn't then you can replace it by something else and you'll get a contradiction all right so that's the thing so once you know this it turns out that doing this minimization is easy this minimization is appears to be well we haven't really come to that seems to be easy seems to have some structures but how do i actually execute it the problem with the execution is i have this k disturbing me right if i change k things are changing so what actually happens in the viterbi algorithm is you start with k equals 0 or a particular k where, where you know something where you know the minimization and then find the minimum for k plus 1 so viterbi pro proceeds iteratively on this k okay so you start with k for which this problem is solved for a particular k where the problem is solved and then using that you solve the problem for k plus 1 okay so that's that's how it works okay so this path star has a special name it's called the survivor path okay so what's my survivor path so i'm using a lot of notation here hopefully it's reasonably clear i mean it's though that notation is tough to keep writing long statements in uh, english so what is my what is my notation let me once again remind you pki is a set of all paths which end at psi k will i'm sorry which pass through i after the k minus 1 stage okay so when then if i put a bar to the right and put some indices there it means i'm restricting that to a suitable number of stages okay so that's what it means okay so that notation is hopefully clear so then uh, there is my there is my survival path okay so that is called my survival path okay so so that's a crucial definition okay so i'm going to call it survival path at the kth stage uh, ending and well at the after the k minus 1 stage okay is going to be argument of minimization paths restricted from 0 to k minus 1 did i put that right what did i do i said that there is some pki right what do you do for pki pki okay so over all paths no, no no i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry this this thing has a special definition okay not this guy i'm sorry this partial minimization has a special definition that is the that is the that is the thing okay i'm sorry about that so let me write down carefully what i meant by that okay paths in pki restricted from 0 to k minus 1 okay path metric okay so i think i might be wrong with this index also so i should call it so i'm at the k minus 1 part i'm saying i'm ending here what am i doing okay so it should be size says pk only okay so among these paths which is the minimum metric path that is the survivor path okay right so i have done the minimization up to stage k all right is that okay so i have to i'll define this for all i that's called the survival path okay so the next definition which is closely related is what's called the state metric which i'm going to denote smk I. Okay. For every I. For every I. I'm sorry. For every I. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, for each I. So let me write it down clearly. Okay. So it's not. You don't. Don't do any more. Any further minimization. Okay. For each I. So how many survival paths do you have at a particular stage? ns size 6 par mu okay so that's that many survival paths you'll have the state metric once again it's for each i okay this is nothing but the path metric of of the survival path okay so remember once again the picture here okay so among among all these paths, there is one path which I am going to draw say with red, which is the 
सवयव पाथ ओके एंड द मेट्रिक ऑफ दैट पाथ आई एम गोइंग टू एसोसिएट विथ दैट स्टेट ओके आई एम गोइंग टू कॉल इट द मेट्रिक ऑफ दैट स्टेट ओके सो अमंग ऑल दोस पाथ्स दिस वन पाथ व्हिच हैज द मिनिमम मेट्रिक in a way it's called survival because you have to only keep track of that path you can forget about all these other paths because in competition with this path all those other paths will lose right there and i don't have to consider anything else. okay so that's the minimization you do all right so so that's the state metric and the survival path okay so the crucial step in the wetterby algorithm is finding sp k plus 1 i and sm K plus one i. Okay, given S P K I and S M K I, the state matrix and the survival paths at before just before stage K, how do you find the survival paths and the state matrix after stage K? Okay, so that's the problem which is solved in the Wetterby algorithm. So once you do this, you just repeat it for every stage, and you have solved the detection problem. Okay, so that's the crucial thing. All right so let me once again remind you what the picture is the picture is something like this ns will do a general i okay so this is psi k and you also have 1 2 some other j and ns and this is psi k plus 1 okay so assuming i have Okay, so let me draw this in red because this is going to be survival paths. Assuming I have stored the survival paths for each of these things, and assuming I have the state metric for each of these things, okay, how do you compute? the survival paths and the state matrix for the next stage okay so how do you join this that is the problem that is solved in the wetterby algorithm it's very 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 simple okay so you see when i write it down it's extremely trivial okay so you said basically you find solve this problem i'm going to find i hat which is argument over minimization over j such that okay maybe i such that Okay, so I'll do J because I've done J. J to I exists. Okay, state metric at J plus branch metric K from J to. Okay, so it's very very simple. Suppose I look at the ith, sorry, the ith, ith state here. what am i going to do i'm going to see back and figure out from which states i could have come in suppose this is a binary input thing size x is 2 then i would have had two possibilities maybe this and this okay right i have two possible previous states from which i could have come to i what am i going to do i have to simply pick which one of these could have happened okay so i go back and say my state metric at 2 was smk of 2 i'm going to add that to the branch metric k from 2 to i okay so maybe i should put a j here just to be consistent with my notation okay and here i'm going to look at the branch metric from j to i okay so i think this picture is getting really really busy hopefully hopefully you can see something out of it okay so finally once you do that you get your most likely thing so suppose the top one was smaller i'm going to say this was my chosen survival path okay all right so if that path was lesser i'm going to choose that okay so once i do that how do i update my once once i find i had how do i update my spk plus 1 it's very easy so i'm going to say sp right on this leftmost side k plus 1 i equals spk i hat and then to that what i will what will i add the 
survey of path ending at i will be the survey of path here and then to that i itself right so you simply add i okay it becomes the survey of path so to find the previous survey of path and to that you add i okay because you know you are at i okay so now what's the state metric at k plus 1 simply the metric of this to the previous state metric you add the branch metric that was chosen that's all okay so that's the simple nature and you repeat this for all i okay so you have to do this for all i all right so that's the vitabi algorithm is there a question it will be order of two mu So, in terms of what, and why are you saying this will be more? Because oh, because you are including the computation that's being done at each stage. Okay, I'll come to it. We'll look at a careful accounting of the computation as we go along. For now, let me let me finish up the whole algorithm. Okay, so this is the so I'll, I'm going to put this entire thing into an algorithmic format. And we'll call it the Viterbi algorithm. Okay, so the input. Okay, it's okay. All right, so the input to this Viterbi algorithm is z k k between zero and l plus mu minus one. I'm also given the trellis. Okay, so I'm going to say I'm given the trellis, and I'm also given psi zero psi. L plus mu, so all these things I know. Okay. All right. So first step is to compute branch matrix for all branches. Okay. In all stages, and then you initialize the survivor path. At zero of psi zero to simply psi zero, and you don't worry about the survival path for any other state at zero because you know at zero you are at psi at uh, zero, and then the state metric corresponding to psi zero would be zero, and in fact in implementations people usually set the state metric for the other thing to be very very large, other states at zero to be large just to. That's just an implementation detail. It's not too important. Okay. So for k equals zero to l plus mu minus one, for i equals one to n s, it's a number of states. The operation you do is i hat equals argument minimum j such that j to i exists in stage k okay so remember in the initial and termination stages some branches don't exist and they suddenly show up in the next stage so just to be convenient uh, just to con for convenient notation i'm going to say this okay i'll add smk j plus branch metric k from j to k okay, i do the argument of the minimum among the previous states find that state which gave me the least transition into this stage least weight transition into this stage i do that and then i update my spk plus 1 uh, i as spk i hat and then i okay this is also possible to do uh, uh, smk plus 1 okay so smk plus 1 i would be smk I had. It's very easy. Plus B M K. I had to. Okay. So you end your two loops. Okay. So you end I. End K. Then what will be your output? Okay. Your output is what? S P. L plus mu of psi L plus mu. Okay, the survival path at the final 
state. Okay, I know that's unique. There's no problem. Once I've terminated, I'll have only one semiva path at the end. Okay, so that one I'm going to output, and that will correspond to the path of S hat. So you go on that, you come back on that path and figure out what S hat would have been transmitted. Okay, so this is the Viterbi algorithm in a stated in a very simple way. It's, it's very trivial to write a program for this. Given the MK, well, let me not say very trivial. <laughs> I don't know what's trivial and what's not trivial these days. So it's very easy to write a program like this. It's, uh, it's not too difficult. But you have to pay attention to some details when you want to write a program for this. For instance, people will never compute branch metrics for all branches at the beginning. Okay, So I just put that for notational convenience here. When, where can you compute the branch metric? I'm sorry? For every stage. Why would I want to do it at every stage? instead of computing it ahead of time. Yeah, so then I have to use only a small amount of memory. Okay, so only corresponding to each thing. That's one thing. The other thing is you'll see a lot of these branch metrics will be very similar. A lot of symbols are repeated. Right? You don't have to compute them differently for each symbol. All of them will have the same branch metrics. And in fact, when you look at mod z of k squared, z of k minus b of k squared, if you do that times its conjugate, you'll see mod z of k square alone will come separately. And there's no reason why you should compute that. Okay, So you'll only compute terms where b of k actually appears. In some cases, mod b of k square also will become a constant. So you can even throw that out. Okay, So you can simplify that computation. Another thing to pay attention to is if your L becomes really, really large is your state matrix might blow up to a very large number, depending on how noisy or how less noisy your system is. Okay. The state matrix might blow out to a very large number. So how can you deal with that in a program? Yeah, exactly. So that's that's the thing. So every time when you compute new state matrix, you can subtract an arbitrary amount to all of them and it won't make any difference to the derivation. Why? At any point, you are computing two state metrics at a particular stage. If you had subtracted something common among all of them, it still won't make a difference. All of these things are useful things that people do in implementation. So you subtract a constant amount from all of them. Usually that's the minimum. So things like that. Okay. So those are all quick hints about programming in case you, you run back to your hostel rooms and open up something and start implementing a Viterbi decoder. It's a useful thing to have. If you are planning to do something, it's a Viterbi equalizer. It's, it's a useful thing to implement and have it done. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to stop here and do an example on Monday. Okay. Because I think the example here, I'll be able to start, but I won't be able to finish. So I'll start do the example on Monday.